Hello guys and welcome to a Game Tech Talks video. So it's been a little while since I've done one of these Game Tech Talks uh, news type videos. There really hasn't been a lot. We're all stuck at home. We know games are selling like crazy. People are playing games like crazy. Internet's slowing down. Uh, all kinds of stuff. But there just hasn't been a lot of stuff. Um, you got stuff like Cyberpunk isn't going to be um, ray tracing on the next consoles at launch. When, th when they launch, it's going to be down the road. So if you want to experience ray tracing on uh, Cyberpunk 2077, um, definitely you're going to have to go for a PC for the foreseeable future on that. But anyway, there hasn't been a lot of other big news so i've been concentrating on the the uh shadow geforce now um <clears throat> playstation now and all the different uh stadia and all the cloud services just trying to get some videos out there on that i'm working on some uh, benchmarks for some different builds right now i've got a couple more kind of like helpful how-to type videos coming and um so working on a lot of different things but i saw this today and i always have to cover anything that happens with games coming and going from geforce now so here we are i want to go through this article real quick with you it's a little bit of a bummer um but it is what it is so GeForce Now is losing Xbox Games Studios uh, titles this week, among others. So, uh, but we have a lot of Ubisoft games joining. So we know that Epic, Ubisoft, uh, mostly Steam as much as possible. Um, these are companies that really, really want to back the service, especially Epic and Ubisoft. So you can just about expect bunches and bunches of those games to keep on coming over. Um, NVIDIA's game streaming service, GeForce Now, is losing support for games from four more publishers and studios later this week with titles from Xbox Game Studios, Warner Brothers, Codemasters, and Clay Entertainment said to be removed from the service on April 24th this Friday. The news comes via a new blog post, which also assured the continued support from companies including Epic Games, Valve, Bungie, and Bandai Namco. Ubisoft is showing a lot of support. The whole Assassin's Creed and Far Cry back catalogs are available on the service as of today, with more games set to join in the coming weeks. So you can kind of see developers, um, studios, and whatnot kind of picking their side. I don't know what the deal is with GeForce Now. I get the license agreements and that companies can take their games because a lot of digital licensing specifically says that they can't be um, cloud gaming for whatever reason, but it doesn't mean they have to pull them. It just gives them the option. And uh, you could just see the clear division here. So I'm still a huge fan of GeForce now. It's a shame to see what's been happening with games uh, leaving the service. I'd really wish Warzone and some other games were on there. But um, there's also games coming to the service. So, I mean, it's still going to be a service that does well. It's just not going to have access to all the games you're purchasing all the time like I know NVIDIA would like for it to. So uh, it is quite a blue blow to lose four libraries in one fell swoop, though it's worth mentioning that few Xbox Game Studios titles were on the service anyway. The most significant was Cuphead. I thought I think Gears might have been available. I can't, I'm not sure. I didn't try it, but um, it won't be anymore. Uh, as for the others, expect to see support for Warner Brothers titles, including all Batman, Middle Earth, Mortal Kombat, and Lego games to disappear come April 24. Codemasters racers such as Dirt and F1 series will also disappear. Clay's Don't Starve will be removed too. NVIDIA writes that it hopes they'll return in the future, which is what they say uh, every time, that they're hoping developers decide to put their games back on the service. I mean, you did buy them after all. NVIDIA assures users that new batches of games will be announced every Thursday, including larger batches throughout April and May, and they have been adding a lot of games. The problem is it just hasn't been a lot of games that necessarily a lot of pe are drawing a lot of people to the service. Yes, they're adding games for the sake of adding games, but we need to see bigger ones. Now, the dump today from Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, great. Uh, that's a great addition to have support uh, on the service. We just need to see a lot more of that. GeForce Now released uh, with a splash late February as a favorite favorable alternative to Google Stadia, since then publishers including 2K, Bethesda, Activision have removed their games from the catalog. For a full explanation of the situation, yes, we know I, I have videos on the channel if you haven't seen them. You can go back and check every time a publisher, a game has left the service, I pretty much made a video on it. So. That's about it for that. So losing quite a chunk of games off of GeForce Now uh, are those things you've been playing from the Batman games, Middle Earth, all the Lego games, Mortal Kombat, um, Cuphead, 
Um, any of the racing games, Dirt F1, are these things that are going to affect whether or not you want to continue with GeForce Now? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm also testing Shadow, as you probably know. If you haven't, I have a lot of good videos uh, on the channel about Shadow. With Shadow, you can play all of your games in the cloud because you're running a full Windows 10 PC. Now, uh, they're still cloud gaming. That's still cloud gaming. So it's kind of funny to me that they're getting away with it, but it would be very hard to stop them. They would have to like track every person that's logging on to that cloud PC, figure, figure them all out, block them. It, I'm sure it would be difficult to do, um, but it's a different kind of service. So you can play any of your games on Shadow. Um, and then something like Stadia is a lot more like a console than it is just a cloud gaming service. That that I've talked about that in videos a lot, that Stadia is more like a brand new console release without the console. Lacking games, issues with price, issues with availability on devices. Um, however, I'm testing Stadia and the tech is there. Um, it streams games extremely well and 4K HDR on my TV looks amazing. It looks great. So the tech is there, um, the input lag feels good. They just need to build the library, get really good sales going on, and get a player base going on, get a lot more cross-play games on the service, um, and I think Stadia will do all right. The technology's there. They just have a ways to go. It's like looking, It's like how new consoles used to be, and they launched. They had a few games. It didn't draw a lot of people until later. Um, um, that's kind of how that goes. And then PlayStation Now um, on PC, unfortunately, 720p30. It's still really good. You can play Spider-Man right now, but it's not really competing yet. Um, a lot with all the cloud gaming, but it will be. So there's a lot going on. Everybody's kind of got games. The only place you're going to play every PC game is Shadow. Other than that, Stadia, PlayStation Now, xCloud when it comes, GeForce Now, no matter what service you're using, there's always going to be a game missing or they didn't support it or something happened or they lost it. There's just always going to be something. Um, with something like Shadow, though, one thing I can say about that service is it's always going to be there, at least for now, the, the way it seems, the way that it's set up. I don't think they're going to be attacking it. So um, probably all your PC games will be available there for a long time. So, all right, guys, thanks a lot for checking out this channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give the video a thumbs up. It really helps. And um, ring the notification bell so you know when new videos come out. All right, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.